Hi friends, it's Deanna here today. And today we are going to be sewing up the Sugar and Spice Poncho from Ellie and Mac. Um, very, very easy pattern. Um, so it's gonna be a quick, quick sew and it's gonna be fun. And it is so cute once it's finished. Um, but before we get started, let me remind you of our fun fan giveaway where we give $50 Ellie and Mac gift certificate to one of our subscribers. And all you have to do is, if you're not subscribed, pause, subscribe right now, and then comment below uh, so you can be entered to win a $50 Ellie and Mac gift certificate. That gets you a lot of patterns. And then you can be sewing them all up with me. All right, so let's get started. I've already cut out my pattern. Um, once again, I'm using the Sugar and Spice Poncho from Ellie and Mac, and it's all cut up. My fabric is cut up. And I am actually going to use fabric for interfacing instead of actual interfacing because that way if my poncho opens up a little bit, you can you just see the fabric and not just that white interfacing in there. But you can use whichever you want. And I'm doing the cowl option. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab our poncho. And now I am not doing the... Um, uh, what do you call it? I'm not doing the lined option, but I am going to tell you how to do the lined option when it comes time. So what you're going to do first is you're going to grab your outer fabric, which to me is all my fabric because of the fact that I'm not doing a uh, liner option. A uh, Yeah, I'm not doing a lined option. And we are going to grab our uh, pattern piece and measure out and mark where those buttons are going to go. My pattern piece has it marked out already. I'm just going to put it right on top of my poncho. Uh, I took some length of this poncho, so as you can tell, and I am going to mark where my buttons go. So like right here. So I'm just kind of marking, I'm not really marking where they go, I'm marking where they are at. That way when I place my interfacing, then um, I know exactly where they are. And then later when you go to put your buttons on, you are going to use that same marking to mark out where your buttons actually are. Um, so I just marked by putting a pin, that's where my interfacing is gonna go. And then I'm going to add the interfacing to the outer side of my poncho. Let's see. I'm gonna kind of mark the... Uh, the other side too, just so I have the markings on there. This will, once I'm hemming and everything like that, this will, I'll move these out of the way, but I'm just gonna go ahead and mark it right now. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and place, so I'm gonna show you with this one. I'm gonna place my um, interfacing right on it. Now, I know that uh, my interfacing is going to be um, my fabric. So I'm going to place my fabric right over here, um, a little bit like a half an inch away from the edge because we're going to um, hem. So the hem will come right here. So it'll come right up to the, in to the interfacing. Um, so, or if you're doing lined, you're not going to hem around the poncho, you're going to line the poncho. So I'm still going to be doing the same thing anyway. Um, you still have a little bit of a thing right there. So here it is. I'm just going to use these pins because, and mine is shorter because like I said, I shortened my poncho, so I don't need that much space. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and sew these on and how I'm going to do is I'm just going to do it on my sewing machine. Just going to baste them on, uh, all the way around. Um, obviously you want to stitch that it's not going to, if it shows up on the other side, it's fine. Um, so that there is that if you want to just, um, uh, put it on with like, uh, some fusible fabric tape or something like that, or, um, if you want to use, like I said, interfacing, you can, I'm wondering, is there like dark interfacing? I was wondering that cause I'm like, cause that would be great for an instance like this where, um, I don't really want my, uh, interfacing to show but I don't want the stitching to show either so if I had dark interfacing that would be great I'm gonna go ahead and sew around that and then we'll keep going All right. so now I have basted my interfacing to the wrong side of my outer front piece okay 
And I used um, just a regular stitch. You can't even see it. I used to use brown, so it's kind of like blends in like a gray color. Um, so that's good. Um, and because if my poncho ever kind of comes open a little bit, I don't know. I mean, interfacing is fine. I just wanted to do it different today. Okay. So now I'm going to grab my pattern, my front, this is my front, and I'm gonna grab my back and put it right on top. And you're gonna do the same for, you're gonna do the same step for outer and a liner. So the liner, I'm doing this to my outer, obviously, because I'm not doing a liner. But if you're doing a liner, you would do this also to the liner. So you do it with the outer pieces, front and back, and then the liner pieces front and back. I don't need a liner because it doesn't get super cold in here, here and in, in where I'm at. So um, I don't need a super thick, so that's why I figured just the one piece would be fine. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and sew those shoulders together. Now, if you uh, are, you, I'm using a serger, but you can use a serger or a sewing machine. If you're using a sewing machine, you would do a stretch stitch. What I would do is I would grab some of this fabric and do a te test stitch, uh, test it on the fabric, what kind of stretch stitch would work best for your fabric that you're using, uh, zigzag stitch, um, lightning bolt stitch, any kind of stretch stitch that you have. And then I would like pull at it and see which one I like best. Um, but I'm just gonna do my serger because I love my serger. So we're gonna go ahead and sew those shoulders together at the top. It would help if I turned it on. Shoulders are on. And um, now, it like I said, if you're doing a liner, you would do the same thing, the same step to your liner. And then this next step is what is different between different between the liner and the and the non-liner version. Okay. If you have a liner version, sorry, I don't even know why I pinned the back place yet because I'm gonna hem it and then it's gonna come off. Then I'll have to mark my button placement later. Okay, if you're going to uh, line it, you would grab, you would open the front and the back, open it up just like so. And then you would put your liner on top of your outer right sides together. So right on top, and then you would sew around all the outer, you would sew them together all around the outside. Um, you can serger, you can um, zigzag stitch, lightning bolt, whatever stretch stitch you have in your sewing machine. So you would sew it all the way around, so you would sew them together. And then through the neck hole, you would turn them right side out and make sure, you, and you go in the corners and kind of pull out the corners to make it look nice and taut and pretty. And you would do that all around the whole thing. Because I'm not lining, I get to hem the whole thing, yay. So we're gonna hem the whole thing all the way around, um, half an inch allowance. So um, I am going to go ahead and do that. Hem my, you can hem it with um, a zigzag stitch, um, double needle, cover stitch. I have a cover stitch, so that's kind of easier. So this is why I'm not dreading this step. Um, honestly, with knit, it really isn't that bad. Um, it doesn't really fray, especially if you have a good knit that doesn't fray. It's not going to come apart and it has a good raw edge. I would be a little bit tempted to leave it on hemmed, but that's just me because I'm lazy. But anyway, I'm going to go finish up hemming and we are going to do our cowl and we will be basically done. Cowl and then you uh, put your buttons on and that's it, okay? So now that my poncho is hemmed all the way around or um, already um, lined, I'm gonna put it aside for just a second and I'm gonna grab my cowl. I'm gonna put it right on top of each other, the outer and the liner. right on top of each other and i'm going to sew at that pointy side i'm gonna sew up that pointy side so right sides together and i'm gonna sew whoop, whoop, like that pointy side right there together 
I'm gonna sew that side and the other side. So we're just putting, lining them up and putting them together. And honestly, hemming was probably the hardest part of this whole project because it's a lot of hemming. But other than that, pretty easy. If you're wondering what I do when I get to the corner, to, I mean to the little pointed edge on my serger, I go up, I lift my foot, wait, I go up almost to the top, I lift my foot and I turn my fabric around. So I go up to like the point, lift my foot, turn my fabric over. So now I'm sewing this way. Um, if it's not a straight point, don't worry about it. That's going to be where the cowl folds. So you, you won't even be able to tell if you've made it pointy or not. So that's not something you need to worry about too much. All right. So now that it's sewn together, make sure you remove the pins if you have not done so. I've done that before and cut them inside and then I'm like, what do I do now? We're gonna open it up and we're going to put it wrong sides together. And now we pretty much treat it like a neckband. I'm gonna take all these extra fluffy things off. Okay. See? So like up here where the pointies are, you don't even tell that they're pointies because they're just kind of, they're where the neck folds down. See? So not too bad. All right. So now we're going to grab our, our uh, cowl and match up. We already matched up those seams of the two, the outer and the liner. So we're going to put them together, right sides together, matching, and we're going to go to the outsides. And those are our quarters, so I'm marking. And usually I just mark by doing a little tiny notch in case my pin decides to move out of the way and get away. I still know where my quarters are. That's why I always do that. And we're going to do the same to our neck on our poncho. Or, yeah, it's a poncho? Sugar and spice poncho. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and go from my shoulder seams, meet them together, go to the back. Go to the front and then um, your shoulder seam, your uh, front and the back meet together and you go out to one side. They're not exactly the same because the, the back is higher than the front. So there, you're going to come up a little bit. I come up like a little bit over a half an inch. Um, so you will come forward just a little bit because the neck is higher than the front. So you want to make sure that you measure correctly. You don't want to have a, a cowl that doesn't fit right. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to match up and it might be easier because this is a cowl to put my fabric, my, my poncho inside out, find the back and then feed actually my actual cowl into it. There is uh, like that, like so. Okay. And then I'm going to match up my points, my quarter points. And I will leave those seams for the sides because I don't want those seams in the front. So I'm still going to attach those seams on the sides. And I am pinning right sides together where I made those marks with the uh, quarters on my cowl. I'm using the seams of the cowl as my quarters too. So my side places, the, uh, uh, what do you call it? Seams will not match up. But I don't think it will be that bad because when you lay it down, you won't be able to even see it. Um, and I'd rather my neckline look even than my lines have to match up. Okay, so see that? They're right sides together. The right side of the cowl is touching the right side of my um, poncho. And now we're going to go ahead and sew them together at that raw edge. You might have to stretch the cowl slightly to match the poncho neckline. So I would stretch a little bit and then um, guide it. The and make sure you are catching all three layers of fabric 
and nothing else. Move all the other stuff out of the way. Make sure you're looking after every quarter because sometimes it tends to want to come under and get cut underneath there. We don't want that. Look at how cute that is. My cowl and my poncho is finished. Now, all I need to do is put my buttons on. And all you have to do to put your buttons on, obviously, well, I would do my button holes first. Um, I would grab my um, pattern piece. See, both fronts have my interfacing. Grab my pattern piece, mark with my button are going to go button holes and then um, go ahead on your sewing machine and do it actually what i am going to probably do and i know this is i'm probably gonna i'm gonna try it on and see and pin it on the sides and try it on and see if i can just sleep and slip it on and off and then i will just put fake buttons on i will just sew the buttons on buttons that will not come apart um and nobody will know um, if I can slip in, uh, in and out without having to unbutton the buttons. So this is up to you. Um, you're sewing for yourself. If you're gi giving it to somebody else, then I probably would make real buttons. Um, but if I'm keeping it for myself, I'll probably just sew the buttons on so it's nice and easy. Um, or you can do snaps or you can even do Velcro if you wanted to pull Velcro on the inside and just up to you. Really, the possibilities are endless. Um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, I hope you have a good rest of your day. Oh, already loving it. Look at how pretty that is. Oof. I hope you have a good rest of your day and I'll see you next time as we saw something else. If you, oh, if you're not part of our Facebook or Instagram page, please come join us. We'd love to have you over there so we can see what you're making and you can see what everybody else is making and you can be inspired. Uh, please come and like, share, subscribe if you haven't. Um, look at how cute, I can't get over it. How cute is this thing? I might just go ahead and change and wear this today. I hope you have a good rest of your day and I'll see y'all next time. Bye.